Why, hello there. I'm thinking to myself, uh, Jebelo, that's how I used to say hello to people. Um, it's good to see you here. I was I just got done having a conversation with a good friend of mine from university, from college, and we were just talking about how uh, things have shifted for for him in terms of his relation to being in this time of uncertainty and change. And during the conversation we had, uh, he brought up a couple different things where he's like, actually, at this point right now, I kind of like how my life is, you know, and I, I, I he's like, I'm not necessarily sure I even want to go back to the office. I'm not necessarily sure uh, how I want to that, that I would want things to change all that much from here. And we had a wonderful conversation. It was really great just to uh, explore some of the questions that were on his mind and some of the things that he's thinking through. And it got me thinking. Um, it got me thinking because for me, I've kind of looked at this period as two things happening simultaneously. On one hand, we have this, this virus that is rampaging us uh, on a global level. And it's just like, it's just really causing destruction and disruption to uh, to our lives, both in terms of the inconveniences and honestly on, on the life to death, life or death um, paradigm as well. So we have this virus that's rampaging us here. And on top of that, we have like this level of humanity that's showing up this humanity of like spending time, slowing down, reaching out to loved ones, like connecting with people, taking the time to be again, to be you again, to explore the things that are that are fun for you, to almost like give yourself the space to simply be and not have to be anything other than, than just be. Um, to, taking time to go on walks, to coloring in books, to organizing different uh, gatherings and conversations and, and game nights and so on and so forth. Like, yo, we're living life. We are really living life at this time. And it's, it's really, I feel it's important to call that out because it's juxtaposed on this incredibly, this awful virus that is, that's really uh, rampaging us simultaneously. And so the conversation my, my friend and I were having continued. And at some point he, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I really wish this could, this could stay the same, but I guess when things go, I don't know, when they open up and they go back to normal, uh, it'll be up to, uh, was to see if like the managers or the leaders that um, will, will allow for it to keep going. It was something to that, to that uh, effect, you know? Uh, and I'll be curious for you, how, how often do you feel like, okay, I, I kind of have a good thing going on right now, but I don't want to really, it'd be great to sustain this right now, but I'm not necessarily sure how it's going to be later on because I don't know what others are going, like how the leaders, how others are going to uh, choose and dictate that for me. And to me right there, like that's, that's one of the big areas where I just want to like just slow down and just like give us a different way of looking at this. Because from my standpoint here, I'm someone who's constantly going to the future, trying to see what it is that we would create. How would the world look like? And my friends, we have, in a lot of different ways, we have a really good thing going on culturally, from a humanity from a humanity perspective. And I'm like, I just want to encourage us to not only just see that there, but to really continue to take agency of our lives. We're at a place right now where we can choose how we're using our time. We're at a place right now where. where the ways that we enter into conversations are different. The ways that we set up meetings are different. We take time to allow people into our lives and into our homes. And we spend time getting to see how people are. There are a lot of wonderful things that are going on in terms of the way that we are relating to each other. And in terms of the ways that, and they're setting up the foundations for creativity, setting up the foundations for people to try new things out and to go and do new things out in the world uh, that might be on either beyond their normal comfort zone or actually like, actually either beyond their normal comfort zone. I was going to go somewhere completely different, but I actually think it might be one in the same beyond the comfort zone of just being yourself once again and allowing whatever needs to be expressed to come out from you. So my thing here is like at this point here, you've actually taken some time to get agency and get back into power. If we're talking about being empowered, my friends, we are living it in a lot of different ways. Yes, there are some restrictions on our life. Yes, there are some inconveniences. And yes, there's some real dangers out there in our lives still at this time. 
And I'm seeing time and time again how people are finding it within themselves to be powerful at this point. So it's been a big shift for me because I'm used to going out and trying to help people see the possibility, help people see what it would be like if they if they to practice self-care, if they crafted their days based on what they needed first and how they could actually be even more productive, more in, uh, imaginative, more creative, more um, I don't know, collaborative, you know, like just, just for them to be able to see the benefits of doing things a different way. And it dawned on me during this conversation with my friend that I'm like, oh, I don't need to like talk about this in a hypothetical. I don't need to set a vision of it. If we simply open our eyes and look around, we'll see that it's already here. The thing is then for me, it's not like, for me, like the new normal, we're living it. It won't be to this extreme, but it's already here. The questions that come to my mind uh, is not, can we sustain that? That to me is not an empowering question. That's a question that someone else who wants to have power over you might ask you here. The real thing that comes out, if I'm going to remain in this power and I'm going to offer this question to you, as you, if you're thinking about this here, is what's it going to take? Who will I be in order to keep the good things that I have going on going regardless of how the future looks? I know that regardless of whether we're in person, whether we're virtual, whether I can meet you for, for lunch, or if I have to be in a, in like, be in a physical room with you for a, a conversation, I am setting up time to spend time with the people that I love. I am spending, I am taking time in my day to uh, rejuvenate myself through walking, through uh, taking control of my schedule, through uh, actually going and pursuing and doing things that I love and enjoy. And, I, and to me, that is, that's coming with me one way or the other. Right now I work for myself, but uh, I think about it from the standpoint of going back into the workplace. And in my mind, I'm like, work will never be the same, right? There's like, there are uh, several months ago, uh, people were like, well, what's it gonna be like? All oh, companies are gonna be disrupted. How are we gonna like go back and uh, go back to the office? And I said, and I was saying to them like weeks ago, I was like, no, no, no. no. Once, the, once people look at how much money they're saving by not having to uh, have people come and be physically in the same office, like organizations aren't going back to that. With the, with the investments that organizations are making in technologies like Zoom and other things to allow for global collaborative work to take place, we aren't going back to a world where we were limited by just being in the same physical space with each other. We have this wonderful opportunity and the world ain't going back. And the fun part about this here is that what comes to me is that uh, there's a shift. There's a shift here because there are going to be some people who want to return, who want to bring, who want to return back to how things were. There'll be some people, and and you've kind of seen, if you're looking around, you might have seen it too. There's some organizations, there's some people, uh, there's some communities, there's some, some yeah, there's some, let's just say, there's some organizations uh, that have taken the culture of what they were doing in person. And rather than refreshing and finding a new and uh, vibrant way that will work in the virtual environment and beyond, they've just worked really hard to translate that into this virtual environment. The thing is though, now everyone has access to this, right? And so that like going forward, the supply of organizations, the supply of opportunities where people are actually leaning into uh, leaning into technology, leaning into giving people space for themselves and to be expressive and to be be agents of their own lives. There are more opportunities for those types of um, the more opportunities for those types of experiences to be had on a regular basis. And what I mean by that all here is that like in the past, I I worked in a tech company and for me to experience, like we've been on Zoom and Zoom like video conferencing for years. I've been, I, in 2009, I helped move uh, my uh, retirement practice onto a, a global uh, digital learning platform. Like, but at that time there were so few options of organizations that would actually embrace technology. In fact, I, I left a consulting company and I was the only one that would be on, on our company, our calls with my video screen on. And back in 2000 and 
13, it was still like completely novel to have your video screen on. I think for a lot of people, uh, it's still in 2020, still completely novel thing uh, to have your, your video screen on. Let's be real. How many of you have uh, are in conversations that where you're still, uh, everyone's present, but like rather than using video, you're still just using audio. You're still calling each other into conference lines and so forth. Like the fact of the matter is things that, th things have shifted. And it's not, we don't have to, we don't have to question what's it going to be like. We already know. The real question here is, are you going to do what it takes to be able to sustain this? Are you going to do what it takes to be able to sustain this? Because there are new leaders emerging, there are new opportunities emerging, and it's those that continue to lean into the world that we have now that are going to be uh, the most successful. Here's the thing, the genie's out of the bottle. They said it couldn't be done, and then it was done, you know. And the, and the, the thing that the thing that comes up here is just to slow down and just kind of call this out. It's it's fun for me to be able to say this to you now. It's edgy for me to say this because not not everyone's interested or willing or ready to hear this message. But it's the message that needs to come out here, and I'm going to give you a chance to have a, a, a leg up here. There is like. We don't need to be worried about the future from this because we're actually creating it in this present moment. And if you can, and if you can take some time to think for yourself, to identify first thing, just identify what is it right now that you're really enjoying? What is it that you love? Like, what is it that you may you didn't have two months ago that is now regularly in your life that you've now spent time saying, okay, I'm actively going to bring this in or someone else has created the opportunity for you to experience it. Take some time to identify what that is for yourself. And then just ask yourself the simple question, what is it gonna take for me to continue this regardless of what the future looks like for me? Regardless of what it is. Cause what, like at the end of the day, I'm here to help make you COVID proof, help you be future proof and help you actually champion in the next era of humanity in which we're doing and, what, and where we're leading to. So just know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this here I have much love for you. I'm I'm excited for what we can create here. And to do this here, we all need to maintain the agency that we have. We've gotten this wonderful reminder that we are in, we're infinitely creative and we have power over our world. Don't give it up. Don't give it back. I don't have to empower anyone. It's so wonderful right now. It's just like, keep what is yours right here and know that like together, we're already creating a future that's been, that's distinct from our past, a future that is distinct from our past. I love you. I see you. I'm excited for what's going on here. You got this and we got this together. All right. Leave a comment below. Let me know some of the things that come to your mind when it comes to uh, what what it's going to take for you to to keep this going. Right. And put it in here. Let me know what are some of the challenges you're facing? What are some of the questions you have? What are some of the fears you have? What are some of the doubts you have? What gets you excited? Put it in the comment, put it in the chat box here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm going to be organizing conversations to give us a chance to really explore this and give you a chance to be able to own this no matter what the future looks like. This is our time. Why? Because our time is now. All right, y'all. Leave a comment. I'll get back to you and uh, just, just know that I have much love for you. Okay. We got this. Talk to you soon. Hey, Oniyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video, or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.